Good morning, dear friends. We are about to begin the Mass in honor of our Blessed Mother on the memorial of Our Lady of Fatima. In this Mass, we ask our Blessed Mother's intercession for her children, you and all your families, the people that you care in your hearts every day. We ask that God may be with you and that God may bless you and that God may watch over you. We also pray for those who have asked our prayers at this time. Pray for those who have died, family members and friends that we know who have passed. Pray and ask that God may grant them rest and peace. We pray for those who are sick. We pray especially for Stella who is asking God's intervention for at this time. Pray that God may help her find healing and its recovery. Pray for our priest. Pray especially for those who are very sick at this time. Pray that God may raise his hands of blessings over them. And that God may heal and restore them. I pray for our young children, our young people. Pray especially for graduates who um, are unable to celebrate their achievements and success at this time. Pray that God may bless them and give them many more opportunities to celebrate and to achieve greater and even more unimaginable things. We pray for our medical workers. Pray and ask that God may continue to watch over and protect them and their families. Pray for our sick, those who are in critical care. May God be with them and help them return to full health. And I'm sure you do have concerns that you would like to bring to God at this time. We bring all of your intentions and concerns to this altar of God's grace and mercy. And ask that God may hear you and that God may bless you. Our opening hymn will be a song to our Blessed Mother Immaculate Mary. Thy praises we sing. Immaculate Mary thy praises we sing who in now in splendor with jesus our king ave 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 maria ave ave maria in heaven the blessed thy glory proclaim on earth with thy children in hope your claiming ave 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 maria ave ave maria in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, we are gathered here to celebrate God's love from this altar and this space. So wherever we are joining and worshiping from, we pray that God may hear our prayers and that God may bless our intentions. I bring the intentions I've offered for this Mass and all your own intentions to God as we ask our Blessed Mother to lift all of them before her Son. Let us now acknowledge our sins, our unworthiness, and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. For the times we did not heed your voice, O oh God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times we could not love as you commanded for us to. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the times we refused to be instruments of your message and good news. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. 
let us pray. Lord God, give to your people the joy of continual health in mind and body. With the prayers of our Blessed Mother to help us, guide us through the sorrows and struggles and pains of this life to eternal happiness in the life to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised, According to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved, because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them. It was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church as well as by the apostles and the presbyters, and they reported what God had done with them. But some from the party of the Pharisees who had become believers stood up and said it is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the mosaic law the apostles and presbyters met together to see about this mother the word of the lord thanks be to god our response to the psalmist let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set our foot within the gates of Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity to eat the tribes go up the tribes of the Lord let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord according to the decree of for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord it is in it are set up judgment seats seats for the house of David let us go up rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is a vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the work that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains part of the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. 
Because without me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I hope that today gave you some reason to trust, to hope, some reason to hang in there, some reason to see that God is on your case as well. And we continue to encourage one another as we struggle through this very, very unusual experience. We pray especially for people who are very, very sick. We pray that God may help them. Today, I'd like us to pay attention a little bit to what the Lord is offering us in the Gospel reading. This is one of the most beautiful passages or beautiful metaphors that the Lord used to exp explain or to capture the nature of your relationship with Him or my relationship with Him. It comes... Um, or it foreshadows what Paul, the apostle, would use. Paul uses the metaphor of the body to show the nature of our relationship with one another. And in Paul's case, he says, Jesus is the head, and we are the body, the church. But here the Lord says, I am the vine. Yeah, maybe most of us have never seen how a vine looks like. But you could take any tree that you know, any tree that has branches. It could be an orange tree. It could be an apple tree. It could be any tree. The Lord is saying that he is the tree. You, me, every one of us are its branches. But there's no guarantee that because I'm a branch or because you are a branch, that you are useful or I am useful. I must make myself useful to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the tree or to the vine. And to make myself useful to the vine, it's a choice. I must choose to be, to remain in the vine. I must choose. So the Lord allows me freedom, allows you freedom to choose to be part of Him. He's not going to force you or force me to stay if I choose not to stay or to not be fruitful, if or to be fruitful if I choose not to be fruitful, it's not going to force that on me. It's not going to force that on me. That's your choice. That's why he's not going to condemn me to hell or condemn you to hell. It's a choice. I choose to go to hell or you choose to end up in hell. So the Lord allows us, he respects your freedom and respects my freedom. And he would let me choose if I want to stay part of him or not. But there's something that he begins with. He says, I am the true vine. I am the true vine. He uses the qualifier, true vine. That must be suggestive that, yeah, that there are other vines that are not true. And we may be grafted, grafted or grafting to some other vine that is not true. We may be alive, but barely surviving. The only vine that is true is Christ. So that got me thinking. Am I part of the true vine or part of some vine that is not true? 
Where is the source of my life, Ikhuni? Where is the source of your spiritual life, Ikhuni? Where do you get your information from? Where do you get your guidance from? Where do I get my information or guidance from? What leads my life? Whose, whose um, teaching do I follow? Now, those are all the questions that will make it easy for you to determine and make it easy for me to determine whether I am part of the true vine or part of some other vine. If, if what I do, if the people I love, if the people I can accommodate, if the people I can tolerate, if the people I call neighbors are determined for me by someone else and not Christ, then I may be a branch, but a branch not of the true vine. Because for too many of us, we go to church, we pray, we read the Bible, but yet, we listen to others, whether these others are in the media, they are politicians, whatever they are, they are the ones who tell us who our neighbors are, our friends, are, our, our enemies are. They define our enemies for us. They define our friends for us. They define what is right and what is wrong for us. So technically, they are the ones leading our lives. Even the, the, the social media posts that we post come from them. So technically, we are, we are fed by them. So our spiritual life, in a sense, is led by them. So, so when I hear this, I am the true vine. I'm like, yeah, I am a branch. But am I, am, am, am I a branch of the true vine or some other vine? Now, that question is not one that I can answer for you or you can answer for me. It's a question that every one of us must answer for himself. And the reason why this question stood out for me is because of what happened at the final judgment. The Lord said, at the final judgment, a lot of us will come and say, Master, I preached in your name. I even did miracles in your name. I did a lot of things in your name. And, and the Master will say surprisingly, I do not recognize you. I do not recognize anything in you that is from me. Because I cannot even see anything that, from, that is from me to you. So that technically... There is no relationship. Yes, but I was part of a vine. Maybe I was mistaking that vine for the true vine. And I think that was why there was amazement and surprise at the final judgment. Because these people believed they were going to church, they were reading the Bible, they were receiving the Eucharist, they were doing a lot of other things. But yet, they were not doing the one thing that Jesus mentions here. Hear what he says towards the end. He says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you if you remain in me so the only way to be part of the true vine is that his word his word is what leads your life what guides your life what directs your actions what directs the way you define everything else on earth that is the only condition that would meet, that you and I need to meet to remain part of the vine, is that we hear his word and do his word and are led by his word. Otherwise, we may label like someone who ran such a great race, except they ran in someone's lane, or did something else, but they ran, they ran very well. They ended up first, only to end up being disqualified. And so as I, as I read this, I want you, and I, 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 we have to think about this. Am I a branch of the true vine? Now, if I am a branch of the true vine, I will recognize that I am not just the only branch. That as a branch of the true vine, there are so many other little branches 
that depend on me. That depend on you. That, that, that is how that relationship is. I am the vine. I am the branch of the true vine. But I do have a lot of other branches that depends on me. On my love. On my affection. On the things I do. On the things I refuse to do. Their life is dependent on what I do and what you do. So the nature of our relationship is one that Jesus continues to be the sustaining factor, the source of everything that we have. But we are the source of what others have because we are part of the chain of that relationship. The question is, what nature of a chain am I? Am I a healthy chain or a healthy branch? That's important for the life of the church, the life of the community of God's people. He said, no one can answer that question for you. No one can answer that question for me. I alone can answer that question for me. And you alone can answer that question for me. But I hope that we are honest with ourselves when we answer that question. What kind of a branch am I? But more than just that, am I a branch belonging to the true vine or to some other vine? And I said, the way to judge whether or not I am a vine belonging to the true vine is whose voice leads my life, whose words guide my actions, guide the way I even talk and speak and behave and treat others. If it's not the word of Jesus, then it's time to reevaluate my values and to reevaluate my the nature of my interaction with Jesus. Yet yeah, receiving the Eucharist or celebrating it is not enough. Wearing this or carrying the Bible is not enough. Having certificates for baptism, confirmation, marriage, ordination, whatever, it's not enough. Belonging to all the associations in the church isn't enough. Jesus did not mention any of those. One thing he said, if you remain in me, you keep my words. Keeping my words is all that qualifies me or qualifies me as a member of the branch that is Christ. So may God help us to not just um, hear these words, read these words, and, and deceive ourselves that we are living examples of what it takes only to end up at the end, realize that we are discarded because we were not honest with ourselves. And so I like to end what I say and everything I do by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. And I hope the Almighty God in Jesus is your delight. I hope and I pray that Jesus is your delight. Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Most gracious God, I just want to thank you this morning. I thank you for all those who have joined us for this Mass. I thank you for those who have asked our prayers. We pray for those who are sick, pray especially for Stella who has requested that we pray. We beg, dear God, that you who heal souls, minds, and bodies may heal your sick children and restore them to fullness of health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear God, we ask our Blessed Mother's intercession. She has always been present with her children, helping us fight pandemics like this, helping us win wars like this, helping us win all kinds of battles we have fought in the course of our history. We ask that her mantle may cover all of our children that she may keep us safe by her presence we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer we pray dear god for our young people pray especially for those who were graduates or who should have been graduates this year they may not have the opportunity to celebrate their own achievements 
we pray, dear God, that you may help them recognize that this is just the beginning. That the value of their, serv their service, the value of their skills and talents will give them better and greater opportunity to celebrate in the future. And in whatever way we as a country can honor their achievements, inspire also God to do it so that we provide them more encouragement to move on. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died around this time, pray especially for our priests who have died from this virus. We pray for members of our families, pray for friends, people that we know, or even those we don't know. Pray and ask that God may grant them rest and peace and pray for their families. May God heal the pain, the fear, and the grief that comes with losing the loved ones, the loved one. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our medical staff, to those who put their lives in danger every day, not minding their own safety or their families, but constantly caring for their patients, that God may protect them and that God may bless their ministry with results. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful God, Hear the other concerns that your children brought to you this morning or this afternoon, whatever they are. Hear those, O oh God. Please take them to yourself and grant every good favor that they have requested today. Hear any other prayer that, that remains in our hearts. Dear God, may your mercy and your blessing be with your children. For we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Blessed I God, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Father, the birth of Christ, your Son, deepened the Virgin Mother's love for you and increased her holiness. May the humanity of Christ give us courage in our weakness. May it free us from our sins, heal us in our disease, and make our offering today acceptable to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends our cause, but defends, but defends us and pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more. The Lamb once slain who lives forever. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world. And so with angelic hosts, we sing together the unending hymn of your glory as with them we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes 
in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the second acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death aboard until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. My dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of our peace. And from me to you and your families, and everyone that you care about at this time, may God's peace find you, and may God's peace rest with you. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. But I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Let only say the word and my soul shall be filled. On this memorial of our blessed mother, our lady of Fatima, we ask that our blessed mother may bring her son to visit with us as she did with Elizabeth, John the Baptist, and Zechariah. That his presence in our homes and in our lives may bring us nourishment in mind, soul, and body. And so as we open our hearts for spiritual communion, may the Lord himself serve us his body and his blood. Let us pray. Lord, we rejoice in your sacrament and ask your mercy as we honor the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. May her faith and her love inspire us to serve you more faithfully in the work of our own salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince, of the heavenly host. By the power of God, thrust into, into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that wander through the world seeking the wings of souls. Amen. My dear friends, before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us at this Mass. And I hope that God is making himself visibly present to you in, in a way that you can relate to and connect with in your life. Because I know he loves you and he cares for you and he cares about you. As always, I like to end everything I say and do by reminding you that you are still the delight of the mighty God and that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. To the prayers of our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn will be the song to our Blessed Mother. We will sing, A Holy Queen Enthroned Above. In holy queen and true above, O Maria, a mother of mercy and of love, O Maria, triumph for each cherubim, sing with all his seraphim 
Jean. 